It is a good evening to the Church of the Living God. A good evening to the Church of the Living God. I would like to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Uh, It is but an opportunity, and it is uh, not by might nor by power, but by the grace of God. And we would just like to pray that the Lord will continue again in his grace and mercy this evening. Before we start, shall we bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. Father, you have gathered your children this evening. The words we do not have, for we are all sinners, but help us, sinner to sinner, to be able to share the word that comes from above. This is our humble prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight, what we're just going to do We are just going to try and excite our spiritual taste buds and try to incline them to the word of God for such a time as this. You find that when we talk of the spirit of prophecy, there is something that is particularly important when it comes to the spirit of prophecy in this day and age. Why? If you read the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, The angel says to Daniel, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Right. Because of that reason, Daniel was given the words of prophecy, and he was told to shut them until the right time for those words was to come. And we who live in this day and age live in the days when the prophecy that was given to Daniel is relevant. If you go down that chapter and you go to verse 10, it says that many shall be purified in those days. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. I love this part that says, but the wise shall understand. The reason why Daniel was told to close that book was because when he asked what the meaning of the words he had been given was, he was told that this you will not understand, for it is not for your time, but for a time to come. And in this time that is to come, again, not everyone was going to understand. The wicked were going to continue to do wicked things, but the wise were going to understand. If you read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 7, it's a familiar text. It says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, we jump back to Revelation that says, but the wise shall understand. So the words of the prophecy have been sealed by Daniel. And when they are sealed, he is told that only the wise are going to understand when the time of this book to be opened shall come. So who are these who are wise who will understand? These are they that fear the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You find that because of this, you and I are being called to be wise. We are being called to wisdom. We are being called to fear the Lord. As we look deep into prophecy, remember I said this evening, all we are just doing is to excite the taste buds and incline our minds to the word of God. Why? Because many of us have have neglected the word of God. But what you realize is that when we are neglecting the word of God, its demand is increasing. When you are neglecting the privilege that you have been given, there is someone who is dying to receive that privilege. When you are rejecting the word of God, there is someone who is dying to know God and experience him. You will find that the spirit of prophecy is one of the key things that distinct the Adventist church from the other religions. Why do I say so? Because we have a keen interest in the present truth. We have a keen interest in what is happening around us and its relation to our salvation. Because of that, we need to be wise. If you read uh, from the book of 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, um, Verses 12, it says that, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, 
though ye know them and be established in the present truth. When Peter is writing this verse, and when I'm reading it today at this point in time, I feel like he's writing it to the typical Adventist of this day and age. Why? It says, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things, though you know them. If there are people who know the Bible, if there are people who know the current things and their relation to the word of God, it is the Adventists. But in the same light, if there are people who are ignorant of those things, it is the Adventist again. So Peter is writing to you and me and saying, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things. I stand here today to remind you and I that let us not be negligent of these things, for we know them, but yet we neglect them and be established in the present truth. Now, if you read from uh, Christian Education, page 115, the second paragraph, Ellen White says, my heart, my heart acts as I see men, even those who profess to be looking for Christ's coming, the Adventists, devoting their time and talents to circulating books that contain nothing concerning the special truth of our time. Books of narrative, books of biography, books of men's theories and speculations. The world is full of such books. They can be heard anyway, but can the followers of Christ engage in so common a work that there is crying need for God's truth on every hand? It is not our mission to circulate these works. There are thousands of others to do this who have as yet no knowledge of anything better. We have a definite mission, and we ought to not to turn from it to side issues, employing men and means to bring the attention of the people, of the people books that have no bearing upon the present truth. Remember, we are saying we are living in the days when the prophecy is relevant. We are living in the days that were spoken of by the prophecy. Logically, the most reasonable thing to do because of that, is to spread the word and bring forth awareness amongst the people. It is to make the people aware of what is going on around them. And when we neglect this, we neglect the definite mission that we were given by Christ himself. Now, you find that most people try to evade the subject of prophecy. Why? Because many think that the subject of prophecy is difficult. You just open the book of Revelations and the first thing that you see is beast, beast, sea, land, and you close the book. Prophecy, it in itself is simplified. Prophecy in itself is simplified. God intends it to be so. If you read Habakkuk chapter 2 and the verses 2, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So, God says, write the prophecy such that even someone who's in a hurry can take a glance at it and understand its meaning. That someone who's in a hurry, we are so busy in this day and age. But God is saying prophecy is supposed to be relevant even to those who are busy, such that when they take a glance at it, they are able to understand. If you read verse 3, it says, for the vision is yet for appointed time, but at the end of it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Titus chapter 2, verses 11, it again supports the, the idea that prophecy is simplified. Why? Verse 11 of Titus chapter 2 says, For the grace of God that, brought, that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. It has appeared unto all men, righteous and unrighteous. We all have been given the grace of God to bring salvation to us. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we all have been given the opportunity. We all have been given the grace of God to teach us about the spirit of prophecy. So this evening, what I'm saying to you is do not deny or do not run away from the spirit of prophecy. Why? Because the gift of the grace of God has been given to you to understand. You do not need a theologian to be able to explain everything to you. For it was explained by fishermen and they understood. 
It was explained to the mere public and they were able to understand. It was explained to people who had nothing to do with school, people who, had, who were not educated, but they were able to appreciate its meaning and embrace the responsibility that was put upon them. If you read again Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17, I'm going to be referring to scripture a lot because when you are dealing with prophecy, you need to be true to scripture. You need to be very particular and not say anything that comes from your own head. Now, when we read from Ephesians chapter 5, I love this passage. This is where we drew our title, Knowing the Times. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to verse 17. The Bible says, See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the times because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord, understanding what the will of the Lord is. See that ye walk circumspectly, redeeming the times. I am no English major, but I understand that when we talk about redeeming, we are talking about something that has been lost, something that we had, but we have given up. Now we are seeking to redeem it or trying to repossess it. So when the scripture is saying, walk circumspectly so that ye redeem the times, for the days are evil, that in itself brings a sense of urgency. That in itself should tell you something about the days that we are living in. That in itself should trigger something in your mind. Why? Because the days are evil. Not only are they evil, but they are few. Meaning that the evil has intensified. And now we are being called to walk circumspectly, to redeem the time. All of us have lost time in our lives. There is time that we have wasted in different parts. I have heard and I have witnessed several preachers and speakers who talk of how they have wasted their years doing other things that did not profit them. And the Bible is calling us that. Let us redeem the times. Are you redeeming the time that you were given? Or are you still in the process of squandering it like the prodigal son? This evening, the call is coming to you and me. Let us redeem the times, for the days are evil. And let us know what the will of the Lord is. As we go through the week of the spirit of prophecy, may we seek personally to know what the will of God is. For the will of God is written in his word. And when we learn his will and we do according to it, we secure places for ourselves in his heavenly kingdom. Now, there is a passage that Ellen White writes, which, if you pay close attention to it, is a little bit scary. Why? Listen, this I'm reading from Mind, Character, and Personality, page 22. When the mind is not under the direct influence of the Spirit of God, Satan can mold it as he chooses. All the rational powers which he controls, he will canalize. When the mind is not subject to God's will, when the mind is not aware of the times, when the mind is not aware of its responsibilities that God has given it, in these times, the devil is going to shape it in his own will. Now, the devil cannot read our minds. He does not have that privilege. But what he can do is to study our actions, is to pay close attention to what we say, is to play, pay close attention to how we interact with the next person. And when the devil pays close attention to that, he knows the type of person that you are. And he will bring things that, things that are inclined to your interests. He will surround you with those things such that you are easily misled and clouded from the will of God. By so doing, he is shaping your mind according to his will. The quotation continues. He is directly opposed to God in his tastes, his preferences, likes, dislikes, choices of things and pursuits. There is no relish for what God loves or approves, but a delight in those things which he despises. So the devil, it's very easy to see him. Why? Because his interests are directly opposed to those of God. So we shouldn't find ourselves in compromising situations where we are saying we are not sure of the will of God. 
Why? Because the will of God is in this direction. When the will of God is saying north, the devil is saying south. So there is no way we should be confused in that uh, area. Those who oppose the truth will call light darkness and darkness light. They will call good evil and evil good. But if we are not well acquainted with the will of God, there is no way we can know them. There is no way we can be aware of them. There is no way we can protect ourselves from the influences of the devil. So my appeal to you this evening is that the purpose of the spirit of prophecy is to awaken our conscious mind, is to awaken our subconscious mind, is to awaken our desires, is to awaken our will, is to awaken our spirits that they are inclined to the will of God. The, what the spirit of prophecy basically does is to give you in plain view what God has planned and also inform you what the devil is planning. That basically sums up what the spirit of prophecy does. Why? God is telling you, this is my plan. And in the same way, the spirit of prophecy also informs you that in as much as this is God's plan, this is the devil's plan to counter attack God's plan. If you read the, if you read the apocalyptic books, Daniel, Revelation, and all the other prophets, you find that whenever they are approaching the subject of prophecy, they address the will of God and they address the devil's attempt to uh, substitute the will of God. Romans chapter 13 verse 13 says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Why? Because we don't have time for those things. We are living in the last days. It is high time that we Invest our time in the will of God. If you read verse 14, it says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its last thereof. So, the spirit of prophecy has come at the right time. Why? Because we no longer have time. And it quickly gives us a crash course of what is about to unfold and how we should prepare and what we should expect and when we embrace that, you will discover that living and interacting with the world is going to be easy. Why? Because you are not going to be surprised when you hear about wars and rumors of wars. You're not going to be surprised by the droughts. You're not going to be surprised by the economic situation of Zimbabwe. You're not going to be surprised about what is happening at Solusi. Why? Because you know the time. But when we do not know the times, we are bound to chase after strife. We are bound to chase after rioting. We are bound to walk as those who are walking in the night who do not have the light. The spirit of prophecy has come in a timely manner. Christ warned his disciples, Matthew chapter 24, and in other passages of um, the New Testament, they ask him, what will be the sign of these things and how will we know that the time has come? And Christ tells them that when you see this, this, and this happening, know that the time has come. The spirit of prophecy is again answering that question that when we see this and this happening, when you see wars, when you see uh, hunger, when you see all these things that are happening, you will be able to understand and appreciate what is about to unfold. So, the warning is clear. Only the ignorant will ignore, or only the ignorant will turn a blind eye to this obvious warning. We live in an age of gullibility. We are easily persuaded. The other reason why we are easily persuaded is because we do not have the knowledge of God. But when we know the knowledge, when we know the will of God, like Christ, when he was tried by the devil, we are going to be able to say, it is written, and we are going to stand by the Lord's word. So, in this day and age we are living in, let us find a stronghold in the word of God. These are things we know, but let us go and remind ourselves. Not only remind ourselves, but pay close attention to them. Not only pay close attention to them, but let them dwell within us. Let them be on the fingertips. Let them be on our frontal thoughts so that whenever we meet different situations, we are able to know 
how we should address each situation because we are well acquainted with the will of God. We are living in the last days. And it is high time we study the apocalyptic literature, which will testify and agree with the events that are happening in this day and age. We are surrounded by different uh, circumstances, but for us to have an understanding, we have to appreciate the spirit of prophecy. This evening, why don't you join me in awakening our desire for the word of God, in awakening that which we had let sleep concerning the spirit of prophecy. Why don't we arise and unite and teach the world about what God has in plan for the world and about what the devil is doing again? If you follow Ellen White's life, when she was about to die, one of her final statements were, I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have believed. We profess to believe, but do we know whom we believe in? Do we know what we believe in? Do we even know the reason why we pay attention and subscribe to the fundamental beliefs? Do we even know their essence? Do we even know what we claim? If you read Revelations chapter 19, verses 10, when John has been made to understand the prophecies that had been sealed in Daniel, when John has been made to understand the prophecies that had been hidden, he cannot do anything else but rejoice to the point that he wants to worship the angel that had explained these things to him. But if you read uh, Revelations 19 verse 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am, the f I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The angel was as excited as John was, because he also had the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now what is the spirit of prophecy? The last part of that verse says, And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Remember, he wanted to worship the angel, but the angel says, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Read that verse, that's what it says. This evening, I am calling you as much as I am calling myself to come and worship God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. If there is someone in the congregation who is also saying, Lord, I may have known for I am an Adventist, about the spirit of prophecy. Or there is someone who is saying, I did not know about the spirit of prophecy. Let us retake this journey together as we continue with this week. Not only end it on this week, but let it be part of our lives. Let us embrace the spirit of prophecy. Why? You will find that most of the things that are confusing you about your life, most of the things that are happening and you're asking why and you're not getting answers, the spirit of prophecy bears those answers. So this evening, I am calling you and I that let us come together and let us rekindle the spirit of prophecy within our hearts. Let us, because the spirit of prophecy will give us spiritual energy that we need and we are going to be excited as joy. And why? Because we will understand the plan that God has for us. Imagine if before your exam, a great while before you write your exam, the lecturer comes with the structure of the exam and even the questions that are going to be in the exam and tells you the mark allocations, the excitement and joy that you are going to have. That same excitement lies when you read the spirit of prophecy. Why? Because you have an understanding of what is about to come. And when you have an understanding, you can appreciate because you now know that even though those beasts are going to come, I'm going to be prepared for them because you have acquainted yourself with the spirit of prophecy. If you are there, I'm going to ask you to stand. As we continue with this week, we want to seek the Lord to give us the strength and the spirit of understanding. Join me as we pray. Those who are saying, Lord, be with me to be able to appreciate the spirit of prophecy. 
I see there are some who have joined me. Let us have a time to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we cannot but thank you. Why do we thank you, Lord? Because you have given us the gift of life. Why do we thank you, Lord? Because you have given us the gift of prophecy. Father, because of the gift of prophecy, we do not continue to live in darkness. Because of the gift of prophecy, we have an understanding of what surrounds us. Because of the gift of prophecy, Lord, we are able to warn the world with this sure word of prophecy. Because of the gift of prophecy, Lord, we are able to stand here with confidence and worship you because we know that you have things that you have planned for us, things that will give us a future, and we can see it in the spirit of prophecy. The devil might try to blind us from knowing your will, but Father, it is in vain that he tries when we stand by Jesus Christ. This evening, your children have stood as a sign that, Lord, reignite the spirit of prophecy within us. May you bless us as we continue with this week, that it be a new beginning for us with regards to your word and the spirit of prophecy. This is our humble prayer this evening. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.